Hi, welcome back to Spring CS 170. I'm going to continue on with algorithms and we'll step a little bit into flowcharts. So um, we left off here with algorithm. Uh, this fact one is basically just talking about, uh, as it says here, the different levels of detail for algorithm. So for example, you might have something that's fairly well designed uh, or well known, I should say, in terms of a uh, uh, algorithm, uh, and it's part of like a more complex algorithm that you're trying to do. Uh, so maybe something like how to sum some numbers together. Uh, for example, like we were talking about in the last lecture about doing an average. If um, you wow. kind of say, well, I don't need to go into the detail about how we actually calculate the sum of all of the numbers that go into the average, I can just say uh, sum the numbers together. Right? We all know that there's more details to that uh, that says, you know, you want to add this number and this number, all these numbers together to get the sum. Um, that we will say is a lower level of granularity <coughs> um, on the um, an algorithm for summing. So that's all this is saying here. Um, and you know there's a just again talking about like building on functionality that um, that you already have used before you or it's known to the user right so um, you know certain things could be built on top of each other so you don't always have to define every single step of the algorithm uh, at the lowest uh, level of granularity. Um, so this one is basically just talking about like there's different ways to solve the problem. Probably like if you're looking at it from a computer science perspective, maybe some very common things would be like how to uh, there's different algorithms to sort like a set of data, right? Sort some numbers or sort um, like some strings uh, or characters, I, I can say. Um, you know, there's different ways to do sorting, um, and there's different ways to do searching also. Um, the output would be the same given the same input, but like how many steps or what the performance uh, would be uh, can vary pretty substantially. Um, so that's all this is saying, right? You can have a few different algorithms. There's no need to say, well, this is the definitive algorithm to do this thing, right? There's multiple ways to, to solve for the problem that the algorithm is doing. Uh, so there's multiple algorithms potentially. And they can have different levels of performance, okay? Like I said, a prime example that comes to my mind would be a sorting algorithm, right? There's, there's actually a number of different ways to sort data. Um, and they have varying levels of um, performance based on the inputs that they're getting. Okay. All right. So it's this one is a little bit easier to do when we actually have a classroom and people are next to each other, kind of, and be able to to do this. But you can kind of visualize this a little bit. And what does this mean? Okay. So you can imagine a classroom full of people, um, and Everyone has a number, right? in this case, one. Uh, and then everyone stands up. And then you add your number to that person's number. And then you store the result. Um, and then one person stays standing. right? And then as long as there's people still standing, you keep on going back uh, and doing the same thing. right? So I'll pause for a second, although you can just pause the video yourself. Have a think about that. What does that actually mean? What do you think this is doing? Okay. Um, okay. I think that's long enough to pause, right? So, uh, basically, you're you're summing up the number of people that's in the class, right? If you think about it, right? So everybody has a number one, right? That's them, their individual, and then you keep on adding a number. Uh, and people keep on sitting down, whoever's still standing, uh, is basically storing a number or accumulating a number. Ultimately, there's only going to be one person left standing 
and that person will have accumulated the number of ones from all the other people in the class, which essentially says you've summed up all of the people in the class. Okay? If you didn't understand what I just said, just have a think about it, but that's kind of what it what it is. Okay? All right. So you look at this again. This is like an algorithm type of thing, but now it's represented in a in a flow chart, right? Um, so this is not something you need to really uh, memorize or anything like that. But it's just a interesting little thing. And uh, if you look in the resources, we actually store a resource with all of the symbols for a flow chart. Um, <clears throat> But like I said, flowchart basically is a way of visualizing the algorithm, right? Uh, and the resource for the flowchart that you'll see in the resources, uh, you'll be able to, you just think of it as like, these are all the different pieces that you can work with. Uh, and they're like Lego blocks, right? Just kind of connect them together. Um, so we'll be going through that in a second. Uh, but the flowchart resource, it'll actually show you examples and stuff like that. Um, so you should be able to try to follow along on it. And most of the cases we'll be giving you an assignment for in this class, you'll be able to kind of match up to that example. Um, if not, then let us know. Uh, but otherwise, you know, try not to make up your own algorithm, uh, make up your own flowchart shapes and, you know, hang them together. There is like actually sort of like a, a way or a process for all these things to kind of fit together. Right? and it's not complicated so try to try to stick to that okay while I'm here you can look at it these these diamonds here are essentially like decisions and this is a very common type of thing where you have something that comes into the decision or this diamond uh, and you'll get one of two things like a yes or no right um, so try to stick to that Right. I know in the past there will be certain cases where people will say, oh, there could be like three things that come out, four things that come out. But uh, for the purpose of this class and for the purpose of the type of programs you're going to be writing, you really need to stick to that, right? Yes and no, right? Or one or two choices, right? Um, that will come out. Uh, and there's a way to nest these decisions together so you can still accommodate uh, like three or four different outputs uh, and we can go over that uh, in a separate uh, time okay so here you go for the flow charts right so this oval shape uh, represents like your start and end right do make sure you include that um, and then the arrow is basically just the flow right so you're going from one step to the next step so there's like a direction to it there's a flow to it uh, so do show these arrows so probably you're gonna start off with this start what? oval shape and then you'll have like an arrow that comes out from it going downwards let's say okay um, and then you have your your input and output right your your data doesn't just come out of thin air right it has to come from somewhere Right, your input could be from like secondary storage, or it could be coming from a keyboard, whatever, right? Uh, and then your output could be again going back out to secondary storage, or it could be going out to let's say a monitor, uh, whatever that is, right? So that's what these parallelograms represent, right? So your input, your output, okay? Your process, this is back to like what we're doing in the fetch execute, right? Your your little arithmetic logic unit doing some sort of calculation, right? Maybe it's adding numbers together or calculating an average or whatever, right? Um, and this is what I referred to before with the friendship algorithm. You have the diamond, right? This is for making a decision, okay? Uh, so uh, is, is, it, is it red? Is it black or whatever? It meets some sort of criteria and then you go left or right on it, essentially, yes or no, okay? Um, and we have flow charts, uh, all listed in logical order. So all the steps uh, listed in logical order, be clear and neat, easy to follow. So generally you start from the top, your top, and then you work your way down and kind of cascades down. 
um, for left to right. Okay, uh, the flow lines. Um, so regular flow, not the decisions, just a regular flow. You have one line uh, out, uh, one line in, um, and all your input output process is one in, one out. Remember what I said about the decision, the diamond, right? One line in, you see it's even bolded here, right? Always two lines out. Don't do something different, right? Two lines out, that's an important thing there. Um, and you can do like pseudocode. We're going to do pseudocode in a little bit too. Okay. Okay, so here's an example for a flowchart um, or algorithm uh, pseudocode. Uh, so here you enter Facebook into your browser, right? That's your URL. Um, and then you're going to have the page. Uh, load up, uh, then you're going to display the page, you're going to enter your ID and password, uh, it's going to validate um, those things to see if you can actually log in, uh, if it's not valid, it'll tell you that you're not valid, if it is, it'll take you to your home page. Okay, and this is how it looks from like a visualization, here's your flowchart here, and it kind of just says what it says on the left hand side uh, in a flowchart way. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop here and pick up with the next lecture.